All right, today we're replacing the bumper on this 2005 Chevy Silverado. You can see it's rotten out. Um, this is a pretty common problem for a lot of vehicles, especially here in Maine or the uh, Northeast states where they use a lot of road salt. Uh, this one was purchased on eBay for around $160 with free shipping, so that's not too bad. Um, let's go ahead and get started. I sprayed everything down last night with PB Blaster, so hopefully it'll come apart easily for us. All right, the first thing I want to do is actually disconnect any wiring um, that runs to the bumper. The license plate illumination actually runs up to this jack plate, which is actually quite nice. Now, on some vehicles, you may not have this. On older vehicles, for example, they, they didn't have this. Uh, and I've also got this uh, trailer hitch uh, lighting that I need to uh, disconnect from the bumper as well. This has been bent. So let me uh, position the uh, camera on a tripod and we'll remove this first. All right, so on this, there's a, like a push tab right there. And if I had two hands, it would probably be easier. Actually, that came off relatively easily. So you can see, basically, you're going to push in on this tab. And then wiggle it free. You could use a small screwdriver to pry it loose as well. I'm just going to kind of pull that out of the way so that it is not going to prevent us from removing the bumper. Okay, next I need to remove this bracket. Alright, so we're going to use a half inch. Uh, combination wrench box end here and we're going to uh, it's pretty rusted so I don't really want to strip it out I'm just gonna uh, take my hammer and give it a couple of gentle love taps here now I did again I did spray everything down with a PB blaster last night I'm hoping that that's gonna I'm trying to keep my finger on it here so it doesn't out. All right, so let's get the second one here. I can't really uh, tap on this wrench too well, so I'm just going to apply even pressure. And it's coming free, so no big deal. Now keep in mind that this process is going to be the same or similar on many, many other vehicles, but even within the Sierras, or the uh, Silverados rather, they may vary because you can see this hitch uh, sort of been added on and I know some of them come with a factory hitch. So keep that in mind even though that uh, you know I'm using a half inch wrench here maybe a different size that those types of things but the process is going to be the same or similar. Alright so let's take a look here if this had a factory reese hitch on it I believe that you would have a couple of more bolts to remove but on this particular setup we do not. Okay, on these uh, nuts here, we're using an 18 millimeter socket and a half inch ratchet. And you can, uh, if you think you need to, you could use a, an extra pipe for leverage. That actually went really easily. So it may not even be necessary. It really depends on the state of your, uh, the bolts or the threads. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove these here real quick and then we'll move on to the other side. Okay, next we need this uh, bolt here. It does catch the uh, top side of this bracket right here. So we're going to need to get that one next. That's a 15 millimeter. Let me position the camera here. Okay, I didn't even need the pipe for that one. I did start a fan, so if there's background noise I apologize but okay these are uh, 22 millimeter and I've just got a my half inch ratchet and a long extension and again I'm going to use the pipe at least initially I want to make sure there's no nut on the top and there doesn't appear to be okay so these are coming off now if you don't have a long extension like this you could uh, Use a shorter extension and swing the ratchet like this, but because I have a long extension, it allows me to have more swing on the ratchet. So let me go ahead and remove this, then we'll remove the other one, and then this bumper should be free. All right, what I would encourage you to do is just double check, make sure you don't have any wires or anything that's going to prevent this bumper from coming off. Uh, you do have that uh, mechanism that lowers the uh, spare tire, but I believe that's just going to pull right out. And go ahead and uh, remove these bolts. Now, if you don't have a reese hitch and your bumper's not setting on something like this, 
Uh, what you may want to take do, a couple of tie down straps and go up and over your tailgate and around your bumper. That way when you remove those bolts, you've got something holding the bumper up. Uh, in this case, I've got this Reese hitch, so I'm not too worried about it. Um, but if there was no hitch, uh, essentially once I remove these bolts, this next set over here, this bumper would be free. So I was thinking a, a tie down strap around the tailgate on each side would kind of give you that added support. So go ahead and remove these ones. Okay, this bumper should be free. Let me mount the uh, camera. All right, so I am running into a problem and that is that these inner bumper brackets are actually too wide to fit out through. And this uh, add-on Reese hitch is not allowing me to tip the bumper down. So I basically have two options. I can either remove this Reese hitch or I can remove this bumper bracket from the inside of the bumper. And I think that's what I'm gonna do. So let me go ahead and grab the uh, socket for that and I'll share with those okay, bolts. So I'm gonna remove these two bolts here. And the problem is, you can see that that bracket sticks up above the uh, frame bed. And uh, I can't tip it down or move it because of the Reese hitch. So let me get those off from there. And those are the 18 millimeter as well. So let me go ahead and uh, crack those loose. All right, so I have that one side off and I'm going to see if that gives me enough play to get the bumper off without doing the other side. Okay, so my friend Bill bought a, a fairly nice bumper. It was still only about 160 on eBay, free shipping. Came with all new brackets, all the plastic and everything. The only thing it, it didn't really come with um, is this spare tire uh, release in the ring that holds it on and I didn't mangle it too awful bad um, but my thought is if I can't get this to work I could just use a, uh, a heavy duty hose clamp on there but I'm going to go ahead and try this ring anyways but the nice thing about a hose clamp is uh, you could you could install that after the fact right because you can actually release it and come back down so, but I'm going to use this ring uh, I'm going to put the brackets on but I'm going to put them loose uh, because of the problem we had getting it off in, in worst case scenario um, I would have to basically mount this uh, to the bumper once the bumper is sort of in place. But I'm going to go ahead and try to get everything in place first and see if we can uh, wiggle it on there. Alright, the brackets are in place but they are loose and I'm fully prepared to remove one if not both of the heavier ones if I need to. Uh, license plate lights are in place, license plate clips are in place, these wire clips are in place. Uh, this is a lot more um, Rigid now, I put some wire in around the inside of this ring, and I'm fully confident that's not going anywhere. So I'm going to go ahead and see if I can get this uh, bumper back okay, in place. Before I put it back in place, I thought this would be a good chance to see uh, where all the bolt locations are. This is the 22, these are the 18s, and then there's a 15 up there. Okay, and you have that on both sides. I ended up removing this bracket as well. Uh, those are 18s with nuts on the inside. All right, so what I've decided to do is actually take these heavy brackets, I removed one to remove the bumper, and put them in place. You can see the issue here is that that's not going to go straight in, and that's that's what basically I had to remove one so I can slide it out this way. Uh, but basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this 22 millimeter with the washer that it came with, and I'm going to finger tighten these brackets in place first. Uh, because it's it's a new installation. It's not going to be bad to get my hands up inside that bumper and get those 18 millimeters uh, bolts and nuts on. So this is what I've decided to do. I think this is going to go a lot smoother than trying to finagle it in place with these where they're not going to slide by this. So let me move the camera here. And again, it's nice because I have this Reese hitch. If you don't have a Reese hitch, you could use tie down straps or something like that or another person. But this is, again, a lot of times I do the one person job. And I figure a lot of other people are doing the same thing, so. Okay. Now I need to look underneath and see sort of how that's setting real all quick. All right, so it looks pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and start putting all the bolts in place. And then what I'll do is once I get them all in place and tightened up, I'll kind of show you where they're all at once again. Um, just to review the location of each All right, bolt. so what I'm doing is I'm tightening down these 15 millimeter bolts 
fairly tight, um, but I'm leaving everything else just somewhat snug. And then I'm going to take a quick measurement on both sides of the bumper to see where we're at. All right, so just under one and a half for this side. And this one is quite a bit more. So this side needs to come up to about there. Okay. So this is what we're going to continue on doing here. I'm just going to tighten it all down and just keep taking measurements as I tighten. All right, just a quick review of the bolt locations and sizes here. 15 millimeter right there, 18 millimeter these two here. On the new kit, on this particular one, the, the nut size, which is on the back, is 19 millimeter. Uh, when I removed the bumper, there was no nut. It was built into the bracket, okay? All of these under here are uh, 18 millimeter for the bolt, 19 millimeter for the nut, okay? And then we have a 21 right there, and that's on each side of the bumper, all right? All right, so this side is about an inch and three eighths. This side is about an inch and three eighths. It's all cranked down. Uh, what we need to do now is plug in our license plate uh, lights. I'm gonna go ahead and cut the video short. I'm not gonna show you. I'm gonna have to drill a couple of holes and mount this bracket, but uh, hopefully this video has been helpful. It's not a quick job, but it's not terribly difficult either. Uh, it's pretty common on these GM vehicles to have the uh, rear bumper um, rod out. And uh, again, my friend Bill bought this on eBay for about 160 free shipping. It looks a lot like the original uh, as far as the color and everything. All the plastic came with it. Um, it's a pretty good deal, I would say. So thanks for watching. If you want to see more of this type of stuff, hit that subscribe button. If you found this video helpful, you know, give me that thumbs up if you would. Uh, it means a lot. And leave those questions and comments below. Uh, those are what keep me going. Thanks for watching. Have fun.